Electric semi trucks are not growing nearly as fast in 2024 as initially expected. The Tesla Semi is a perfect example of this. After being announced in 2017 and seeing initial deliveries at the end of 2022, the company still yet has to mass produce this 500 mile battery powered semi truck. As electric car adoption is skyrocketing, Faster in China and in Europe than even in the United States, electric semi-trucks are only starting to get off the ground over the past two years. Volvo, Daimler, Freightliner, Tesla, and Nikola are some of the key players in this industry that have launched, announced, or even sold trucks to customers so far. However, amidst concerns of high capital costs, as well as operating expenses that aren't as low as initially predicted, many companies are still keeping these trucks on the back burner. Diesel trucks are still the way to go for many businesses. So how fast can electric trucks truly take off and what's holding them up so far? And what better way to start than by addressing what's going on with probably the most popular semi-truck on the market, the Tesla Semi. As we all saw over the past 12 months, Tesla Semi is on the road, although in limited supply, with certain companies, in this case like PepsiCo. Both Walmart and PepsiCo ordered the Semi many, many years ago, especially with the help of government grants which essentially allowed those trucks to be free for them. However, there are multiple companies that are still waiting on the semi that they already paid for as the full production of this vehicle keeps getting pushed back every single year. After the pilot production started at the start of 2023, now expectations are for the full-scale ramp to happen at the end of next year in a factory built from the ground up in Nevada. UPS, FedEx, and more are still waiting on these trucks, which right now Tesla has only around 100 of on the roads in the United States. With the company planning to show off the semi at the IAA event in Germany, there are opportunities for this vehicle to also launch in Europe. But as it turns out, many competitors like Freightliner and Volvo already have their cards sorted in Europe already. 373 miles of range. That is currently the industry standard for a truck that is in mass production and available at wholesale. That is what Volvo's next generation FH electric truck coming next year can do. And that is certainly a very reasonable range, but still out of the realm of many businesses who want to do over the road trucking. Volvo, for example, has eight electric trucks in this lineup and has delivered more than 3,800 to countries since 2019. That is a pretty big deal. But automakers like Tesla and Daimler are coming close and testing their own long haul semi trucks and have been doing so for a long time. The range anxiety is only amplified in heavier vehicles like semi trucks. And right now, Volvo and other automakers have to resort to innovating in the e axle driveline technologies like integrating the electric motors and transmission, improving aerodynamics and even using higher density cells, which is taking longer than expected because of an economic tightening across the world, as well as severe inventory. As a matter of fact, Tesla said that their cars and their trucks are in short supply because there simply aren't enough batteries to fully launch into volume production of the electric rigs. And this folks is where the problem for electrification begins. Not only do electric trucks have much bigger batteries, but they weigh more as a result on average. And the dollar you're paying versus the mile of range you're getting is extremely low compared to diesel or natural gas. This isn't just an issue for the range and the usability of this vehicle. It's also a problem for cost as well as charging because the bigger your battery, the higher power you need to sustain a reasonable charge time. For example, the Tesla Semi can charge at 750 kilowatts, which is three times the rate of not only other electric trucks, but exactly almost seven times as fast as most electric cars on the road can. 
That means seven times as much current or voltage combined on the interconnection lines at that specific charging station. And that is a pretty big deal because charging station is permanent and the duty cycle is much lower than a fuel station like hydrogen or natural gas where over hundreds of trucks can refuel in a single day, a single charging outlet can only maybe charge a few handful of trucks a day. Because obviously, even at a supercharger, these trucks will take two hours to charge from 0% to 100%, which by the way, is something not portrayed by a lot of these companies who market only the 20% to 80% charge rate. Investments in this area are also being much slower than expected, with Schneider expecting to open a four and a half megawatt charging facility for 32 trucks, but supply chain bottlenecks like switch gear and interconnection timelines slowing them down rapidly. Watt EV, a startup out of California, also opened a charging depot in the port of Long Beach with the help of the government, but its hubs in Bakersfield, San Bernardino, and Gardena are simply way too delayed for any companies to consider them nearby. And then there's GreenLane, which has a $650 million joint venture between Daimler and many VC firms, planning to build medium and heavy-duty EV charging and hydrogen fueling stations, but with the EV charging being particularly delayed because of its interconnection challenges. Permitting new supplies on the grid is already very expensive, and guaranteeing that it's clean is even harder. And what this specific problem is being amplified by is the bankruptcy and illiquidation of so many companies in the supply chains of heavy-duty powertrains. Proterra, for example, went under in 2023 with its business being bought by Volvo Group, and Romeo Power, another battery pack supplier, went bankrupt in 2021, resulting in significant layoffs and an acquisition by Nikola in the following year. This has resulted in a significant amount of contracts getting canceled, and all of the designs that were won by these customers having been completely revamped for these products, further delaying the timelines. And then when it comes to charging, there are 18-month construction times in the best-case scenarios for building larger charging stations, which happens to be why companies are also exploring the route of going heavy-duty hybrid or hydrogen electric. Because where 90 to 95% of charging for electric cars can be done at home, that can't be done for a day cab tractor, which needs to be running around the clock and has to be quick and easy to use. How quickly this problem gets solved for the charging infrastructure, only time will tell. But the reality is, cars and trucks are a different breed of electrification. But as usual, folks, that is just my take on the situation. So let me know your thoughts on how electric trucks can grow down in the comment section below and whether or not the Tesla Semi might be delayed even further. Thanks all for watching, folks, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.